Hi, I'm Chris Martinson of Peak Prosperity. It is Saturday, June 6, 2015. Here's your weekly update. Now, we have a lot going on at the website right now at Peak Prosperity. Some really interesting conversations are happening. One of the big ones is around the form of denial that our culture is in, that maybe our species is in. And denial is a very human, um, well, some would say it's not really an emotion, but it's a state that precedes a lot of the other emotions. And since denial has three forms that you can be in, one which is just outright, I'm not even going to see this thing we're talking about. It's not even in my field of view. I can't detect it. Uh, the second stage of denial is really more active than that. It, it's, uh, it's either minimizing or dismissing this thing that, that is uh, confronting you. And then the third stage is to actively project onto the situation and to blame some other party or something for this thing that you're trying to avoid. Th those are the three stages of denial. And our, our country in the United States, but I think the whole world is in denial economically with respect to where we really are in this energy story and very much so with respect to what's going on with the ecological world in the environment. So starting with just the first D in the economy, I mean, look, there are states, towns, municipalities that are uh, clearly unable to meet any of the pension promises that they've made, and nobody wants to talk about them. You find candidates for office refusing to even bring the subject up because there, there are no good answers, right? So when there are no clear solutions, it's just a predicament. What happens? Well, we just avoid talking about it altogether. Uh, that's the ostrich approach, head in the sand, ho hope it all works out. On the energy front, look, we get 80% of our energy from fossil fuels. Uh, 10 calories of every food calorie is actually a fossil fuel calorie. So those 10 fossil fuel calories are what we are eating. And uh, that's what's supporting 7.2 billion of us. We're no, we know we're going to 9 billion. And there are a lot of people in denial, both on the green side, the business side, the ungreen side, the oil side, doesn't matter, who think that we're going to somehow transition to alternative energies without any disruptions or that, it, or that we won't have to prioritize anything, that we can have our green energy and our current lifestyles. Look, there are anywhere from 100 to 500 fossil fuel energy slaves working for each of us who are watching this around the clock, silently, out of sight. It creates an extraordinarily easy standard of living. Life is as easy as it's ever been at least from the standpoint of not having to secure your basic needs. The honest thing that we need to talk to ourselves about, the non-denial thing we need to start talking about is, we need to start figuring out sooner than later how we're going to live with fewer of those energy slaves operating for us. Can we cut our energy consumption in half and still lead high quality lives that are worthwhile? Absolutely, no question about it. Look, we waste 30% of our food, just waste it. Could we tighten that up a little bit? You bet. But first we have to get out of denial and say, not only is it sort of a economically reasonable thing to do to not waste 30% of our food, but it's, it's an energetically necessary thing. It's good, and ecologically, it would be great for the soils if we didn't have to squeeze every last calorie out of the soils because we ended up wasting 30% of it. There too, we find that you know, there are lots of things going on ecologically that we're in denial about. I mean, what do we really do with the fact that, that the sardines have collapsed in the Pacific Ocean and that we have 40% less phytoplankton in the ocean? The base of the food chain has been fundamentally eliminated outside of a few scientists who are legitimately freaking out about this. Nobody else is talking about this. This isn't on our daily news cycle, but those are the things that we're talking about at Peak Prosperity because you, you know whether we ignore them or not, they're still happening. So that's one big, big uh, sort of discussion going on. The second is we have a new two-part report by Brian Preddy. It's around credit. And uh, this is really interesting. It's a, we all live in an era where credit, all the forms of debt and borrowing have been growing at a much faster pace than our income has been growing, or GDP. And it's been going on so long, for 40 or 50 years now, that people think it's normal. Uh, historically, it's not normal. It, it's, ab it's mathematically, it's not normal because you would know, like, if you were, if you were earning, I don't know, make a number up, fifty thousand dollars per year, and uh, and that was growing at four percent a year, but you had a hundred thousand dollars on your credit card, and that was growing by 
8% a year, you would realize sooner or later you'd have a math problem. And that's, that's really where we're at. $200 trillion of debt across the world, growing like crazy. Thank you, central banks, you know, because we, in, we're in denial uh, around a very simple economic principle, which is it's really a dumb idea to borrow at a faster rate than your income is growing. But when we look at our income side, GDP, our economy, we find it's not growing like it used to. We think we have explanations for that. It's around resources. It's around too much debt, very simple prescriptions, but still we're not talking about this collectively at a societal level, which is why we're talking about it right now and which is why we talk about these things at peak prosperity because not talking about them doesn't make them go away, right? Um, just because you don't want to look at a situation or reality doesn't change it. So that's what we're doing and, and would love to invite you to come by for that. And, and the, the summary is this. We need a new story. We, we need a brand new story. A story away from we're consumers to one towards potentially we're stewards. Uh, one away from, uh, away from the idea that it's all about profits and money and what we're going to earn this quarter towards a story about what kind of a world are we leaving for the generations that aren't even born yet. Uh, it's away from the story of thinking it's all about humans and how do we maximize the number of humans on the planet to how do we balance the number of humans and all of life so that there's enough for everybody because this web of life is something that we're all tied to. Whether we're aware of it intellectually or in our hearts, we know this to be true. We are a part of nature, not a part from nature, a part of and when we do things to nature, we do it to ourselves, as within, so without. So this is a new story is, is something I, I care about a lot. I don't, I don't honestly, I, I don't know how to go about creating a whole new story for, for, for myself, let alone all of culture, but we have to do this. And so we have a new story festival coming up. It's in Connecticut. It's on June 12th, Friday, uh, and June 13th, Saturday. Um, and... Uh, and this new story festival is going to have Charles Eisenstein, myself, my wife Becca, all three of us are going to be looking at how we would go about creating a new story from some different angles. It's going to be a really great festival. The Friday night thing is a VIP dinner. Saturday is a day-long festival. If you could come to that, love to have you. Love to see you there. Join us as we together start to figure out how to come up with a new story because um, the days of denial are passing. We all know in our hearts and minds that something has to shift. It's leading to a lot of anxiety, but that's okay. That's, that, that's the energy that precedes change. And so we can all feel that change is coming. Why not be part of writing that new story? And let's write that together. So that's the invitation. And if you can't make it to the event in Connecticut, come by the website, subscribe to this channel, and, uh, and, and we'll see you there because uh, this has to be done. Come on. It has to be done. So with that, I'm Chris Martinson of Peak Prosperity. I will see you next week.